Hello, good afternoon to Last meeting, I mentioned that we can represent vectors in what is known as the unit vector notation. So here you see that uh, vector A is expressed in terms of unit vectors, i hat, k hat. And now we add another unit vector called the p hat. So whatever component is multiplied to k hat, like in this case, it is the component P sub G, then that component is along that. So in a 3D uh, Cartesian plane, you have three axes, the X axis, the Y, and the Z axis. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry for that delay. So let's say, for example, a vector A is uh, 2i hat plus 3j hat plus 4k hat. So if you have a vector that is represented in this manner, if that is a vector that, that has a starting point at the origin of a 3D uh, 3D Cartesian plane. And the ending point of that vector is located at 2, 3, 4. So I can draw it like this. I'll try my best to draw it. So in a 3D Cartesian plane, this vertical axis is usually the Z axis. And this one is the uh, x-axis. And the one that is protruding away from the screen, this is your y-axis. So imagine that this y-axis is protruding out of your screen. So 2i hat, 3j hat, and 4k hat means you move two places to the right along the x-axis. And then three places parallel to the y-axis. So you can draw dashed lines to be more accurate. And then again, you, you go up four places, four steps parallel to the z-axis. Uh, in fact, you can even draw dashed lines to be more accurate. So you're essentially you're drawing a cube, no? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Some somewhere like right here, no? That that <coughs> is where the end point of your vector is. So it's really hard to imagine, but with practice you will uh, find that it is easier. It is really easy. <laughs> So if you have two vectors that are represented by their unit vectors, the unit vector notation, if you get the resultant vector A plus B equals R, you can just use this formula right here huh? that uh, to get the resultant vector in terms of unit vector notation. This is similar to what we did last time. To get the Rx or the x component of the resultant vector, you just add all the x components, the x component of A and the x component of B, to get the y component of the resultant vector, you just add all the y components the y component of A plus the y component of B. And now we have an extra because this is 3D. To get the z component of the resultant, you just add all the z components, the z component of A plus the z component of B. So, uh, right.
So this is the new, like this one, we did not discuss this when we, we, we talked about 2D vectors. But now that we we're talking about 3D vectors, then we have to add the Z component of our resultant. And now you can solve for the uh, magnitude of our vector. Remember that the Pythagorean theorem for 2D vectors is just Rx squared plus Ry squared. But this time, um, this is, there is another component, which is the Z component. To get the magnitude, you get Rx squared plus Ry squared plus Rz squared. So this is the three the three D version of the Pythagorean theorem. So this is the magnitude, and what about the direction? Now to define the direction, you have to take note that um there are multiple ways to define the direction. So you can calculate how uh, how many degrees your resultant vector makes with the x-axis. So theta x here is called uh, the, uh, the angle that your vector makes with the x-axis. So if this is your, again, if this is your 3D partition plane, and if you have an angle like this, let's say this is your r, vector, theta x is the angle that uh, your theta r makes with the, uh, <coughs> the x-axis. And that is, formula is cosine theta x is equal to rx over r. And if you really want to solve for theta x, then you just uh, r cosine rx over r. And now, if you want to get the angle that your resultant makes with the y-axis, and then use the formula cosine theta y is uh, ry over r. And if you want to calculate how many degrees your resultant makes with the z-axis, then you just use the formula cosine um, theta z is equal to R, rz over r. These are actually known as the direction cosines. And in fact, when I ask you to find the dire direction cosines, that means I, and you don't have to solve for the actual theta. You just solve for the ratio of rx over r, ry over r, rz over r. So, for example, I say find the direction cosines. Then you just solve for the three ratios: r x over r, r y over r, r z over r. But if I say find the uh, the angle that the the vector makes with the z axis, then you have to solve for theta z, which means that you have to inverse cosine rz over r okay so let's have some example no this last one a particle undergoes three consecutive displacements uh, theta r1 is equal to 15 i hat plus 30 j hat plus 12 k hat centimeters theta r2 is equal to 23 i hat minus 14 j hat minus 5 k hat centimeters that r3 is uh, negative 13 i hat plus 15 j hat centimeters find the unit vector notation for the resultant displacement and magnitude you have three vectors and the symbol that they used for displacement is delta r1 delta r2 and delta r3 so don't worry about this these are just displacement symbols but what matters is that these are vectors and to get the resultant displacement is just to, to add all of these vectors. 
And the great thing is that these vectors are expressed in unit vectors. So what we need to do here, the del well, delta R here is the resultant vector. So you add all the three vectors. No? All the X components are just added, 15, 23, and 15, 13. So you can see here for delta R1, the X component is 15. Delta R2, the X component is 23. For delta R3, the X component is negative 13. So 15, 23, negative 13. And uh, for the Y component, and for the Z component, we have here 12, negative 5, and 0. Because if you notice, delta R3, delta R3 has no Z component. Which means that delta R3 lies only along the xy plane. Then you finally get the magnitude, I mean the resultant, in terms of its unit vectors, 25 i hat plus 31 j hat plus 70. <clears throat> so, if you uh, want to uh, solve for the magnitude, there you just use this um, three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem, where of course our x is twenty-five, our y is thirty-one, our z is seven, and you will get a uh, forty centimeters. So that is all, class. Uh, our lesson today has been about three D vectors, and uh, I want you to to then solve the 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 very tiny assessment that I have prepared for today, which is also due today, or maybe even tomorrow. Okay, um, thank you very much, and uh, goodbye. When do I stop recording?